It's actually snowing outside. This is so on point. Hey guys, it's model making time and we're back building the Bristol Blenheim Mark 1 in finished service. So the kit I have is from Arc Models. However, I had this kit originally as Eason Express, which I think is the original issuer of the kit. My dad took me to Nottingham to go to lots of model stores when I was a kid and this is the one I chose to get. It was just so different than usual having a Blenheim but on skis. I had to. <laughs> As usual, it was one of the many model kits I lost back in the day. So I found one online and was like, yes, I have to get this. And well, here we are. The Blenheim itself was built as a Type 142 civil airliner to Lord Ruffmore's request to build the fastest airliner in Europe. And it was stunning for its time. There's no doubt about it. By the start of World War II in RAF service, the aircraft was already outdated and it would later be, you know, relegated to training duties. The aircraft would have its heritage known in the Beaufort and Bowfighter series, however. The aircraft was ordered by Finland as the first export customer, originally ordering 18 Blenheim Mark 1s. These were delivered between 1937 and 1938. Finland actually did acquire a licensing agreement for the aircraft and would want to build them themselves. The outbreak of the Winter War prevented production of the aircraft, however, so they ordered some more from British stock, and 24 further British-made models were supplied to Finland. After the Winter War, 55 Blenheims were manufactured in Finland. The final aircraft didn't roll off the production line until September 1944, so by no means was this a very early war production for Finland. Apparently my cat wants to learn about the Blenheim too. <laughs> The total number of Blenheims in finished service was 97 aircraft, that's some 75 Mark 1s and 22 Mark 4 aircraft. The Finns also received some examples from Germany, which may seem like a shock, but bear in mind that it was in Germany's interest to supply Finland with some aircraft. These were built in Yugoslavia and then supplied to Finland from Germany. Between the Winter War and the Continuation War, the Blenheims flew almost 3,500 missions, shooting down 8 Soviet aircraft. The aircraft would go into storage for some period of time before being brought out again as a target tug. The last flight of a Finnish Blenheim was on the 20th of May 1958, so that's a considerable service record. This is even more so the case when you consider the fact that the aircraft was considered outdated by the start of World War II. In Finnish service, the aircraft was known as Tin Henry, and so today we're going to build our own Tin Henry with skis. I'm so, so excited. Let's go have a look at what's inside the box. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified of when I'm preparing for live streams so you can set reminders for them. And also you'll get to see every video that comes out on Mondays because I release new models on Mondays. Boom, here we are with the Blenheim. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this. I mean, just look at this. Look at this gorgeous gear. Ugh, oh, I'm so excited to build this. It's gonna be so different to everything else I have in my collection. Okay, so this is a Finnish aircraft, and I don't think they're allowed to show the aircraft with its original markings. So I'm going to talk about these decals in a second. I'm going to talk about these decals at the end of going through the actual kit itself, and we'll also talk about the use of the swastika for the Finnish Air Force, because I feel like we do need to talk about it, because it's, you know, it's a bit of an elephant in the room. So we'll talk about it once we've gone through the kit. So looking at the kit, it doesn't look, it doesn't look bad. Um, I assume maybe these parts came on a sprue at some point. Let's just dry fit a few bits and see what they're like. Obviously we've got to fit the engines and stuff in, so this is just to see what it looks like. You know what? I think this is going to look a grand little old kit. I mean, say a little. I think this is the biggest kit I've done on this channel so far, because we've not really done much, you know, kits in the way of, like, bombers and stuff. Then that would go on there, like that. Looking pretty swish. Let's assess the quality of the clear parts. You know what? <laughs> These are bloody good. So, the turret is worse, but I mean, overall, I'd probably give these a 7. These are pretty good. Pretty decent. 7. 7 out of 10, I'd say. The other sprue parts, obviously, there's quite a lot of mush here, which is not, not great. But I mean, it is what it is. Like, we can't really do a lot about it. But I mean, it's not really affecting the parts too much, and I mean, it comes away easy enough. It's really thin. I mean, they look okay. Uh, the pilots don't look great. <laughs> they also look too modern, I think, as well. You know what? Yeah, like, I actually think this looks okay. And this should build a really, really lovely kit. 
Swedish Count Erik von Rosen gave the Finnish white government its second aircraft, a Fulin Type D. Von Rosen had painted a personal good luck charm on the Fulin Type D aircraft. The logo, a blue swastika, an ancient symbol of the sun and of good luck with no political connotation at the time, gave rise to the insignia of the Finnish Air Force. The white circular background originated when the Finns painted over the advertisement from the Thulian Air Academy. The swastika had officially been taken into use after an order by Commander-in-Chief um, CGE Mannerheim on the 18th of March 1918. The Finnish aircraft, uh, the Finnish Air Force changed its aircraft insignia, which resembled the unrelated swastika of the Third Reich after 1944 due to an Allied Control Commission decree prohibiting fascist organisations. It nevertheless continues to feature in some unit emblems, unit flags and decorations, including on uniforms. In 2020, the BBC reported that the Finnish Air Force had quietly stopped using the symbol in the emblem of the Air Force Command. I never really comment on these things, but I felt it was important to talk about this because it's, it's a part of the Finnish Air Force's history. Um, so yeah, I felt really awkward about it. I didn't know how to address it. Hello, and here we are with the Bristol Blenheim. Also, my uh, my cat's co-piloting today. They do this quite a lot, particularly when they play War Thunder. So yeah, they're just gonna chill out whilst we hit whilst we do this today. <laughs> so this was the Bristol Blenheim, and I actually put pilots in this one, and I guess crew, not just pilots. Uh, this was actually the suggestion of one of the viewers in the live stream when I was originally making this. So. Thank you for them for suggesting this. I can't remember exactly who it was who said, hey, maybe you should put crew in. It added so much to this model kit, particularly when you see the finished result, <laughs> finished result, you'll appreciate why it adds a lot of character to it. Um, I don't think they look bad either. I think the techniques I've learned doing the Polish cavalry video has really added to my ability to do 172nd scale miniatures. I feel quite confident on them now. Like, I don't think I'm the best in the world, particularly compared to some of the train manufacturers or train painters, I guess. Uh, they, those guys are insane, but it looks okay. Putting the wings together was quite easy. Everything fit quite well together in this model kit. I was genuinely quite surprised. I was expecting to have a battle with this kit. Like, it's an old kit. Like, by no means did I expect it to go really really smoothly and yet it did <laughs> like surprisingly so so it, it, nothing took a massive amount of time the only thing a difficulty on you can see i made the little skis the bit the skis attached to uh, you don't glue them so they can just sort of wiggle like that and adapt to terrain and i wanted them to do that um so that if I did want to do anything with it or have it like flying or whatever, it could move. Um, these were actually retractable in real life. Um, so, you know, if I ever wanted to take it off and just put it in a flying stand, I could do so. Um, so I didn't want to glue them fully in place. And yeah, I ended up with the with, with them sort of being able to fit in, but it, it was a challenge getting out, like the struts to fit in properly. That was the, the main challenge on this whole kit. Uh, to be honest with you. Um, I took recommendations from, I think it was Anna or Commander Warcraft, as you'll see them in chat sometimes, uh, as to what colour the finish should be in their uh, in, in their World War II colours. And I also then just sort of did a quick Google to have a look as well. There were a few different suggestions, but I think I got the right colours overall. If not, they are inside, so it's not the end of the world. I think they look okay. I don't think they look bad by any means. As I said, the Polish cavalry has really taught me how to do 172nd scale miniatures, um, particularly using inks to help highlight the features of the face. That's that's the really important one I think I've, I've discovered. You can see I've glued the wings in place as well. Again, everything fit really easily. The actual construction of this kit was so, so straightforward. Um, but I don't know if I'd recommend this kit to beginners purely because the instructions aren't great. But it's not a kit I don't think, I think anyone should be as, as scared of. It's not like particularly difficult or particularly challenging. The moulding isn't the best, but like I've seen Airfix kits that are still produced because they're off the original moulds that are still probably worse than this is. And again, that's no shame to shade even to Airfix. It's just the old toolings of some of the models are just, yeah, I mean, look at the old Nat kit, for example. <laughs> Now we get onto the painting of this kit because, as I say, construction was so easy. Everything just sort of glided together. Um, I even got like, you know, 
I think I've got one of the propellers can spin, one of them can't. That was just, I'm not very good at gluing propellers in place without getting them stuck, so. Oh well. Um, we undercoated it all with uh, uh, Humbrol Primer and uh, that was just Grey Primer 1 I think it is and it was an olive green on top that I could see and a light grey or I guess it's a standard grey underneath that's the colour scheme I went for. I can see there are multiple colour schemes I can see one that was like gr all green with uh, black sort of uh, camouflage striping uh, but not like stripes but like a pattern on it and there were some as well that were sort of um green completely all over that I saw that I wasn't really too sure on. I found a couple of websites which listed like every sort of version of the Blenheim and this is the one I went for overall because it was closest to what was on the box and there were a couple of pictures of I sort of regret it, I sort of wish I'd done the sort of black camo on top of it but it like it, it looks good in the end and that's the important thing and we've got something that's now, whilst doing the decals on this model, I actually managed to set some fire by putting the instructions on top of a candle, which is really, really smart of me. However, decals were pretty straightforward, doing swastikas was quite easy, um, felt really weird putting them on an aircraft, but I did it because it's what, I guess, is historically appropriate, it just felt bizarre. I did catch one of the decals when I did the final varnish, which sort of partly came off and I had to repaint it on, but Overall, not many decals to do, and I think it looked pretty good in the end. I mean, the decals are probably quite old, so I have to add some lenience for that. Plus, I did manage to paint, the, you know, the remaining part of the symbol on. It just doesn't have a hundred percent match for colour, but I mean, uh, I can I can allow for that. I think. <laughs> Given the fact I set an actual fire doing this kit, I'm not sure if the candle's a good idea, but here we are. So I finished a kit. It was actually quite easy to do, I was surprised. I've only ever heard negative things about Eastern Express kits, and I know this was one originally. The original boxing I had as a kid was Eastern Express, and although this is by ARC Models, I assume it's a reboxing for Western Market. I mean, it has some French on it, so I'm assuming so. It was actually fine. It was really easy to put together. Everything actually fit pretty well. I've had more issues with Airfix kits than I had with this kit. So, you know, it was pretty good. Detail was minimal, but acceptable levels, and the instructions were kind of bad, but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a pass, it, it fit together. There were also a couple of bits that were missing from the parts, which I guess because it's a remold, maybe they just didn't have all the sprues, potentially, but who knows. Either way, let's go have a look at the model itself, and I've done something very different for the presentation of this model, so there's quite a lot, so just... I hope you enjoy it. I, I'm really proud of it. What do you think? I, I'm really proud of it. I thought it looked really cool and it was so fun like making it in the snow and everything. I was, yeah, I, 
It was so fun, what can I say? I, I wanted to do the snowbird video that I did last time. I wanted to put that on the board, but I thought I'll, I'll surprise everyone with this. And yeah, it was really good. Just as a crafting note, I used the same bit of board that I got uh, actually from Hobbycraft for a couple of quid. And on one side, I stuck on some fake grass and then put that with the flock um, sort of mix on half of it to do for the Polish cavalry video that I did. And now just as a grass that I have to use whenever I need grass. And the same for the um, the snowy side, I literally just PVA glued it, put snow on, hadn't used the snow before so I didn't really know how it worked. Turns out you can't really build it up um, without letting it dry in between. So over time I might build it up, but at the moment it's just sort of a flat terrain piece for me to use when and if I need to. Thank you for watching another video from me, Ms. Muddler. Um, please share this with your friends. I really want to spread, you know, the model making love around and crafting, I guess, as, as it is. Obviously, I've had a couple of flaws during the production of this kit, including half of one of my decals sort of just coming off during the varnishing process, and that's unfortunate, but it does happen. And, you know, I sort of just resolved it by ignoring the problem, and I painted over it, and it doesn't match 100%, but I think it still looks good. In fact, if anything, in my head, it's, you know, it's in a war, it's just been painted over with the closest match that they have when they're in the field. What I'm trying to say is, you don't have to be 100% historic accurate, just have fun. I mean, that's what I did with everything to do with this kit. I just looked at a couple of photos online and went, yeah, sure, I can probably do that. I just wanted to make sure that everyone can have fun and that model kits are accessible to absolutely everyone. Please share this video with someone who you think might be into model making. Let me know in the comments below what your first model kit was. This is the model that inspired me to do something different with presentation. Although you saw the Polish Cavalry video first, I did the snowboard way before I did the Polish Cavalry. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video, or the next live stream. Even better, both. <laughs> Bye! Thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again, I really appreciate it. Have fun modeling.